So what, you might ask, has this got to do with sail making? Well, one clue is that we're in Nevada, birthplace of the American casino, which is also home to a sail making company that 25 years ago took a very big gamble and won. That gamble was to break with tradition. Instead of creating a sail shape by joining shaped panels, the new idea was to build a complete sail on a 3D mould. There were plenty of doubters, and even North had their reservations as to whether this would really be the future. But almost 25 years later, 3D sail making is bigger than ever. Apart from being the world's biggest sail maker, North Sails is famous for its 3DL technology, moulded sails. And that manufacturing plant is here, in Minden, in the desert. But in the last couple of years, the company has moved the game on even further. 3DI is now the sailmaking technology of the future. And this is where it starts. Since it was first announced, 3DI has been causing quite a stir. Not least of all because of how it actually is constructed. It starts off with some tapes. That happens over there in that hall. And that's the bit I'm not allowed to show you. It's that secret. The tapes consist of carbon fibre, aramid and dyneema and the quantities vary depending on the application. For a full-on Grand Prix race boat a lot of it's going to be carbon fibre. For a cruising boat a lot of it may well be dyneema and aramid. But those tapes are made and then stored in a fridge just here. Each sail is constructed by using panels, you might think just like a normal sail, but these are different. These panels are created by laying down tapes by a machine. This sail behind me here is from Melges 32. It's got four panels, bottom, two middle sections and the head section. It's nearly finished and when the machine has finished laying down the final layers, it'll be rolled up onto one of the cardboard tubes you can see on the side over there and then sent over to the moulding shop for the next stage of the operation. Before the sail components can go over to the moulding shop, they've got to make a vacuum bag for it. And that vacuum bag has to be the same shape as the sail itself. And so that starts with laser cutting the plastic bag here on this laser plotter. Each of those plastic sections is then assembled here on this bench to make the final vacuum bag for the sail. The 3D moulding process is indeed what North have become most famous for over the last 25 years and I have to say it is pretty impressive. I mean here is an array of all of these jacks, each one individually driven. They're pneumatic drives that drive a little worm drive itself that cranks up each of these legs. Now when the mould is being inflated it's quite remarkable. There's a whole clatter of noises as each one of these jacks talks to another one as it goes up incrementally to create the size. It sounds like it's, a, it's got a life of its own. The individual sail panels are then rolled off their cardboard tubes onto the mould and then taped up around the edges ready for the vacuum bag to go on the top. The plastic vacuum bag is then placed over the top of the laminate. It's then tensioned out with these guy ropes here and then a vacuum applied to actually bed the whole thing down on the mould. Once the sail's snug on the mould, then the cooking process starts with this computer controlled heater that scans the whole surface of the mould. Once the cooking process is finished, the mould is then flattened before the sail is then taken off. The sail is then laid out on this floor where it's left to cure for five days. The last stage of the process 
is the finishing of the sails, where the head and the glue and the batten pockets and all the other bits go on the sail. And at this point, it does actually look like a sail loft, but it's the only bit. So has the gamble been worth it? We'll put it this way. North reckon that 3DL alone put them 25 years ahead of the competition. 3DI has launched them even further than that. Now normally I'd say that that was a ridiculously bold claim to make, but having spent some time here and seen it in detail, I'm not going to disagree. And after all, Nevada is the state of the high rollers. <laughs>